So one of the things with social software inside the company, people are reticent to share because they don't want to be the company idiot. In 2005, when I first went out on my own, was working with, there was a startup in Silicon Valley that said, hey, we see that you're going to be coming. Can you swing by and talk to us for about two or three hours? Um, they no longer exist, and I cannot remember what the name of this company was, but they had a small space in uh, what's now sort of the Symantec campus. Um, and I knew that because when I went to go do a project with Symantec, I'm like, this looks really familiar. I've been in that cafeteria. And in that cafeteria was this little project of walking up to people randomly that were going to get coffee and saying, hey, do you guys know you have a wiki? Do you use it? Have you found it? Have you edited it? And everybody's, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Edited it? Add something new? No. I don't want to be the company idiot. And I'm like, I asked six people. Four of them said, approximately the same thing, if not exactly, I don't want to be the company idiot. My job is on the line. No way am I going to touch that thing. They'll email, email things, and the others hadn't touched it um, as well. None of the six had touched it. So I'm like, OK, we need to figure out how to make this a little bit easier for humans. So the way that we do that is taking a step back from the digital space back to the human space. Uh, trust is a very powerful world. Everybody is like talking about trust. 2008. Um, I finally got fed up. Um, and because I couldn't design, I couldn't develop solutions around this trust problem. And I tend to work with an awful lot of C-level folks, an awful lot of upper-level management. And they're like, oh, well, our company needs to trust this. Our people need to trust this. And trust has seven different definitions. And so I ask them which definition they're using. And they give me a definition. And I'm like, oh. And they change it in uh, two or three sentences. And they move through three or four of them fluidly. You cannot ask a user to talk about trust and give you an answer. And so in 2008, I banned the word trust. We are no longer using the word trust. It cannot be uttered. You have to use a proxy term, another term, tell me what you're really thinking. And one of the things that we also run into is sort of false knowing people, um, which I frame as the paradox of familiarity. And we're familiar with people uh, through working together. And it's like, oh, you know, we sort of understand who people are, and we have a social comfort with these people because we have worked with them. There's also familiarity through reputation. I haven't met this person, but I've heard great things about them. Um, I've read some of the things that they posted. Um, and so there's this understanding of who somebody is. There's also hallway familiarity. That person that you run across at 10.15 every morning, you're going to get coffee. They're coming back with their coffee. Hey, how's it going? No idea what their name is. And all of a sudden, after two years of 10.15 in the morning, of 200 days a year, you're sitting across the table. Hey, we're working on a project together. You're the coffee guy. <laughs> and it's just like, oh, you're really familiar. Hey, how the, uh, hmm, how's your coffee? <laughs> and that's all you really have. Um, and then there's online familiarity, where it's like, oh, yeah, I follow your Instagram account. And there's like these others that sometimes there's depth online, and then sometimes there's just not. But there's sort of this sort of familiarity which can, you know, sometimes give it a little bit of comfort, but it also drives a majority of the population really crazy because they don't really know who these people are. You know, am I going to share you know, my plan for the next project or you know, the things that I'm working on for, you know, to move my career ahead? What am I going to share with them? How am I going to do this? And so what we have, and one of the things I started working with and is that there's seven different intents that people have. We're trying to favorite and see what our favorites are over time. We're favoriting to share with others. Um, there's also a favorite to show you approve of something and saying, hey, you know, this looks really good. I, you know, they, they are trying to sign off on it and say, yeah, the, go ahead. Um, and also uses a bookmark to come back to, which has nothing to do with like or dislike. It's like, I don't have time for this. This it looks interesting. I need to hold on to this, form an opinion, come back to it. Give kudos to the creator. Um, quite often, people are like, hey, they'll, they'll favorite something, give a like. Uh, because they're just saying, hey, good job. Uh, also, a hook to trigger other services with um, IFTTT or if you use Twitter and Instapaper. Instapaper can go out and grab your Twitter faves and pull it into Instapaper for later reading. Pinboard will also go out and grab your uh, Twitter favorites and expand the full thing, archive it fully text searchable, have it in there, makes it easy to come back to. So it's just a hook for other tools and uh, aggregation piece. has nothing to do with like or sharing with others. And lastly, it can be an acknowledgment that you've seen something and just saying, yeah, I'm not going to respond anymore. This is end of conversation. And someone's like, did you see this? Did you see this? Did you see this? I faved it. You know, I, we're good. 
Um, and so just being able to have this understanding and so that we get out of misunderstanding, but there's no really good easy way to do this. So the, that's where the comfortable walls, uh, the comfortable spaces is really important because people are more comfortable to have a fear of failing with people who they're familiar with, to put ideas out there, crazy ideas. Um, they may not do it to a whole organization. Um, and quite often, um, you know, having other people say, yeah, that's a, a, a crazy idea, but yeah, let's, you know, let's float it. And sometimes they'll float it anonymously and it may come out of a group. Um, so the group might put it forward and put it out on their front porch and say, hey, we've got this idea. What do we think about this? Um, and then being able to hold on and track the person who actually put it out there um, so that they get credit. Um, and being able to get that right so that they get credit, but they, they're not seen as a failure and removed from the company. Um, and it's one of the, the big things is sort of uh, going through culture change and going through change management um, and getting the organization uh, ready. And one of the big questions I have in kickoff meetings is what happens when something goes wrong? Um, and there's an organization here in the DC area where it was really funny because um, they're like, oh, it's fine as long as it isn't, you're not saying something about the CEO. And the whole room goes, oh, yeah. And so there's been people who had been fired immediately for questioning, just saying, hey, is this really, maybe we should take this other tack. And it was something, a CEO's uh, mandated uh, way forward, and they were gone. Desk was cleared in an hour. 